Good morning. Good morning. Before we start this morning, Gary is the player working where you can record this. Everything is good to go. You got that, that camera thingy on. Gotcha. Before we start, let's bow our heads and ask the Lord for his special blessing. Father, this morning as I prepare to speak, what I pray, Father, is it's not my words that come out, but it will be yours. Father, what I pray for is for humility, for compassion, but most of all, for your spirit, spirit of truth, spirit of love, that you help us to understand and grasp what has taken place in this last week. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been doing a series on the origin of evil. And if I wasn't here last week, but if you were here the week before that and the week before that, we went through how evil started. That God did not create evil. It's not part of His plan. It's not part of His will. But evil did not take Him by surprise. And when it happened, He was ready for it. We looked in Ezekiel, and that's where I want you to turn. And we'll do a little recap. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 15. Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. Ezekiel 28. find Jeremiah, keep going one book after that is Lamentations, and then you come to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 15. As moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord. Now, as you start to read these next set of verses, you realize this is talking to more than just the king of Tyre. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. It's given down to verse, uh, the end of that verse. It says that the workmanship of your trembles and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created, that they were perfect. Verse 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers, I established you, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones, and you were perfect in all of your ways, but <coughs> iniquity was found in you. It's talking about Lucifer, the covering cherub. He stood at the very throne of God. God created him perfect, sinless, and at some point, iniquity was found in him. How does that happen? It happens because God made angels the way he made us, with the freedom of choice. That they could decide to follow him or to disobey him. And Lucifer, we are not told how long, but at some point, decided to disobey God. And God gave him the freedom to do that. And in giving him the freedom to do that, God had a plan in case that would happen. Turn with me again to Isaiah, chapter 14. That's going backwards. Isaiah 14. We're going to look at verses 12 through 14. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be 
like the Most High God. This Lucifer, this angel that God created perfect until iniquity was found in him, wanted to be like God. And we learned that how he could be like God was to have worship. Because you can never overthrow God, nor could you take his place. But to be like him would be to be able to be worshipped. So Lucifer had a heart change. God created him to be selfless, to look out for the betterment of others. He turned that into selfishness. And that's where the iniquity came from. So turn with me real quick to Revelation chapter 12. This is what happened after Lucifer turned into Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, says that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But the dragon did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. And so that great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. War in heaven. Lucifer, who wanted to have a throne just like God's, Realize that you cannot overcome God. It's impossible. And he created chaos in God's home throne, where God sits, where he inhabits, where it was harmony and perfection and beauty. Satan caused chaos. Is God a God of order or a God of chaos? Since God is a God of order, order and chaos cannot coexist. And so Satan was cast out of heaven. And where was he cast? Down to this earth. And now you start to understand why there's so much chaos and so much evil and so much suffering on this earth. God is not the author of chaos. God is not the author of evil. God is not the author a man going into a club and killing innocent people. Amen. But the devil is. Understand that he's real, that he's active, and that he controls people. Question, brothers and sisters, is after this week, and this has been a tragic week for our area, do any of you even remember who Christina Grimmie was? She was a singer on The Voice. Christina, Christina Aguilera was one of the judges on that show. She was a contestant. A young girl had a beautiful voice and a lot of talent. Adam Levine was her coach. And she was singing at the plaza <coughs> down in Orlando, which is right behind the center care that Trevor takes care of. Like, right behind her. And after a concert, she was signing autographs, selling CDs, and a fan came up and shot her. Came up and shot her. Her brother tackled him. The fan shot himself. So nobody is going to know why he did what he did. We were up in Georgia when all this happened. We don't have the television up there that actually gets regular TV, you can just play movies up there. So we didn't know any of this was going on. And, you know, we kept seeing on Facebook that this person was safe after the shooting. I thought they were making a movie in Orlando. You know what I'm saying? No idea what was going on. Then find out that took place Friday, then 
early Sunday morning, the mass shooting, and then just a couple of days later, the baby is grabbed by an alligator and drowned. We have seen this so often that we can go on with our daily lives and go, well, yeah, that was really bad, but it doesn't really affect us. This happened here. This happened in Orlando, really close. Some of you, I work out there. I work right down the street from where the club is. I couldn't get to that job because it's still blocked off. If we continue to keep thinking, acting, and doing what we've done in the past, then nothing is ever going to change. Thank you. Because I'm talking to you. You here, any of you that actually see this, the devil was cast to this earth. The devil and a third of the angels of heaven were cast down with him. What are they doing? They're not sitting on the beach taking a vacation. They are active and they are causing chaos, disruption, pain, and misery. And it has come to your town. <coughs> Say it loud because I can't hear you. They don't sleep, they don't quit. They never sleep, they never quit. But you know what? You have a God that never sleeps and never quits either. But the problem is, the problem is, is that you don't see God working, but you see evil working. Why don't you see God working? Because God's people don't have the power of God to show the world that He's real. Mm. Well, why don't we have that? Because we have put politics and we have put theology in front of who the true God is. That is why if you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, thinking the same way you've been thinking, and acting the same way you've been acting, nothing will change. There are those in this room who love our president. There are those in this room who hate our president. But do you realize that he's a man just like you and me, and he has had to go th through ten of these memorial services in his presidency? Ten! I would not want his job. And I thank that man for being able to do it. Ten of them. And after each one, he talks about gun control. And those on the right say, that's all he wants. If you went to 10 of these memorials, wouldn't you talk about gun control? Yes. If I'm stepping on your toes, I hope I am. <clears throat> the problem with talking about gun control from that perspective is that those of us who have guns and want to keep them are worried that you're going to take them all away. Chaos. Politics. <clears throat> At some point... You have to start thinking as a community and seeing what is best for all. Not just you and not just the people who believe like you believe. This mass shooting took place at a bar. And it was a gay nightclub. And because it was a gay nightclub, the Christian community had a hard time trying to figure out how are we going to respond to this. We should have been one of the first ones to respond with compassion and with love. But the problem is, is that there is political differences between the gay community and the Christian community. Are you going to let those differences keep you from showing the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ? What does your church stand on? That's not rhetorical. What does your church here in New Smyrna stand on? Right? So it should be the Word of God. Is that right? So here is our problem. You have the Christians who stand on the Word of God. You have the gay community. And there are differences that we have. And the Word of God tells me that I cannot change the Word of God. So I will not. But the Word of God also tells me that I am to love my brothers and sisters who are in this world. Amen. And that if they differ from me, I am still to show love, compassion, Amen. mercy, and justice. 
And that the differences that we have are not greater than the God that I'm supposed to serve. Your view on gun control or the lack thereof. Jesus transcends that as well. I'm going to tell you what I think. This is me personally. This isn't from the Word of God. This is me. There is no reason for an individual to have a military type assault weapon. It's not for hunting. It's for one purpose, which is why they're called military assault weapons. It's for mass killings. I don't need that. And I'm going to tell you, you don't need that. But I believe in the right to have a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun. Second Amendment says that we as a nation should have that right so we can protect ourselves. But this president each time talks about gun control and all those on the right say he's trying to take away your guns. It's all you read on social media. He's not trying to take away all your guns. He's trying to make a difference. Democrats say yes, Republicans say no. I'm tired of both parties. Amen. I'm sick of both parties. I'm sick of politics. Because it never changes anything. We, in the church, have been fed a lot by our political leaders. Amen. Do you realize that I have been a Republican all my life that I could vote? But I am more comfortable voting for Hillary Clinton than I am Donald Trump because that man just scares me. And the people who will overlook everything he says, but will vote for him because he's a Republican, they scare me too. If you're outside of the church, you don't scare me as much. But those inside the church, you scare me. Because you have taken politics and put it into place of your God. Jesus transcends all of us. If you continue to hold on to all of your <clears throat> agendas and ideas and perspectives, perspectives, remember what the, the, little, the little boy told us what perspective is? He defined it so well. Your perspective may not be mine. And mine may not be yours. And mine doesn't make yours any less worthy and yours doesn't make mine any less worthy. Wow, I sound like a Democrat. I don't want to sound like that. I want to sound like Jesus Christ and I want to stand on the Word of God. Amen? Amen? I want to be able to show my brothers and sisters in the gay community that I'm a Christian. I love you. You may not agree with how you think, how you live. You may not agree with how I think or how I live. But you know what? This country was founded on debate. Uh, debate. That we can talk about the differences that we have. You can't do that today. Because you're, no, let me rephrase this. I am so cemented into my point of view that I can't see yours as having any validity to it. And vice versa. It's dangerous. I've had enough of talk radio. I've had enough of political talking heads. And I've really had enough of Hillary and Donald. Amen. 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 Telling me in a country of this size, those are the two best that we can do. Just going to go a little bit more about them. I'm going to tell you both sides. The Democratic side. You guys are really going to vote for her who has the record that she has that will tell you anything you want to hear, will change <laughs> with the political winds, was in office, you can see the record, you can see the failings, but I'm more comfortable with her than I am with the Donald. Because 10 years ago, he was with her party, and he supported her husband. Now they're the enemy. 
And anybody's his enemy who doesn't agree with him. That's dangerous. And what I see is that that type of attitude is now being played out on the people who support him. Good Christian people who support him. That's dangerous. Make your party the party of Jesus Christ. Make your party established upon the true word of God, not manipulated by a political party. What did Jesus say you should do with your enemy? No, man. Donald told me that I should just berate them and make them non-human so that it's easier for us to attack them. And the political left does the same thing. There's no difference. Satan controls both parties. I want to see a change. And I'm only able to influence the people that are here today. And if it doesn't start here, then I'm wasting what God has given me this time to do. If God cannot change your heart, if you put politics over the truth of the Word of God, then there would never be a change. You're going to have another shooting. That's going to happen. You understand? The debate's going to be rolled out again from both sides. What are you going to do personally to change what's going on in our society? Let's look at some scripture. Turn to Titus chapter 2. That's in the New Testament. Towards the end of Paul's writings. Titus chapter 2. Look at verses 7 and 8 and then 12 through 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 7. In all things, Titus is a hard book to find. I'll give you a little more time. It's still here. What's that? Find all the T's and go to the last one. Is that thunder out there? Yeah. Maybe that's God saying amen. Verse 7. In all things, show yourself to be a what? Show yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine showing what? Integrity, reverence, and here's a word that you need to fully understand, incorruptibility. Stand on the Word of God. You will not be able to stand on the Word of God if you do not know the Word of God. Amen. Do not take my interpretation of the Word of God, but read it for yourselves and learn it for yourselves. Amen. In all things, show yourself to be a pattern of good works. Good works in doctrine, good works in integrity, good works in reverence, and good works in incorruptibility. <coughs> Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is in an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. This is a country that was raised on debate. God promises you that if you know the truth, you will not be ashamed. Amen. Because you're not standing on your truth, but you're standing on the very foundation of God. The problem is, is that the political left and the political right has taken this book and used it to their own agenda. Don't stand on their version of the truth. Amen. Know the word for yourself. Know the Bible. Read. Wasn't this dispute that you were talking about in heaven, wasn't this a debate? Yes. And it was a debate that turned into open warfare. Why? Why did it get turned into open warfare? Because Satan would not submit to the authority of God. And that's the same problem this world has. Amen. At some point, saints and sinners alike are going to have to submit to the Word of God. Amen. The full Word, whatever it says. My sin may not be your sin, but it's still sin. Right? How can the created become the creator? It's absurd. Good question. Good question. So listen, that was um, Titus 
Chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. I'll read verse 8 again. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. The, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Now, let's go down to verse um, 12 through 14. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for what? Listen, man, if your life and your Christianity isn't being shown on the outside, if the world can't see anything in your works and what you do and what you say and how you speak and how you treat people of Christ, then you don't know Christ. Amen. Okay, no way fans or buts about that. Okay? Jesus has power and he'll give it to you and he'll give you the power to overcome this world. But he doesn't give you the power to overcome this world through violence. He doesn't give you the power to overcome this world through hatred. He gives you the power to overcome this world through love. Love. Okay, that's Titus. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. It's going backwards. Romans 12, verses 20 through 21. Therefore, how are we to tweet our enemies? Do you even know who your enemy is? In this country, everybody that doesn't believe the way I believe is my enemy. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. We have become so divided that it's only going to take a God to be able to unite us. Listen, September 11, 2001. Does that date ring a bell to anybody? Yeah. Do you remember how united the country was? Do you remember how many prayer vigils they had and how many people were going into churches and how many people who never would step into a church were turning to God? Do you remember how our politicians from both sides of the hour came together? How long did that last? A month. Nice. New York City taxi cab drivers actually let a person out. You know what I mean? I don't know if you've driven to New York City, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a lot of person that I'm saying something. I remember our politicians from both sides getting on television and speaking a unified voice that we are America, that we are strong, that this hurt us, but it won't defeat us. How long did that last? We are more divided now than we were before September 10th. Do you know why? Because God's people will not submit to what God wants them to do or be. And that is to love unconditionally. To show the world compassion even though they don't believe the same way we do. And to be incorruptible in our beliefs. Listen, brothers and sisters. When Paul and James and John and Peter and Jesus himself were arrested. What were they arrested for? Because they were stealing? Because they were murdering? Because they were breaking into houses? Because they were committing white collar crimes? What were they arrested for? Because they were doing good. And they had the love of God in them. And they were light in a world of darkness. Amen. That's what we are supposed to be. Light in the world of darkness. I've told you this over and over and over again. And I've said after every one of these tragedies that darkness is going to grow darker and darker. And what that should do is have God's people shine brighter and brighter. That's not happening. And that's a sad testament. Me. I'm going to give you an example of this. I don't know how long you guys can let me go. I got my hair cut yesterday. I walked into the um, uh, hair cuttery place. That's what it's called, actually. Hair cuttery. And the young man in the back was probably in his early 20s. Had purple hair. Had uh, 
earrings that a girl would wear, had fake eyelashes.